giving a bit of background history about um, what I do and how I've got to be where I am so far. So um, I grew up, well, I was born in Queensland and I grew up in Brisbane until I was 12 years old. So I lived in the deep suburbs of um, Brisbane in the 80s and um, I grew up in a house full of sort of costume making and art making and my father was a builder so there's always things being built and my mum was a costume designer so there's always fabric and glitter and um, art and stuff everywhere so I was heavily influenced by my family and my surroundings back from when I was a little kid and um, art making for me was always um, what I did for play so I had friends and we'd build um, tree houses and you know, do regular kid stuff, but I was also quite content drawing and um, painting and being in my own, own sort of world and making my artwork. So um, in 1994, my mum and my sister and I moved here to Auckland and um, I went to Takapuna Grammar School, which I found a little bit difficult, <laughs> just being from straight from Australia and I guess going into high school, which is a sort of weird time and um, everyone was quite clicky and I didn't really fit. And my mum, knowing that I was heavily into making art and I was a little bit different from everybody else, um, enrolled me at Auckland Metropolitan College, which was a school in Mount Eden with 100 students. And um, if you had a particular interest like I did, it was a great place to be because you could do your core subjects but also excel in art and music or whatever it was you wanted to do. So um, this was a really great time for me because um, I could spend all my days in the art room, which I totally loved, and there was heaps of other weirdos like me, so that was good. And I also met um, Elliot Askew, who some of you might have seen his presentation a little while ago, and he was one of my best friends at school and was really, really obsessed with graffiti and tagging and thought it was the best thing in the world. So he would see me doing my characters in the art room and... Um, and his friends were always trying to convince me to go out painting with them. And um, I just thought it was totally strange that they were so obsessed with going out and putting their art up on the street and risking getting caught or chased by police dogs. But, um, and also staying up till like five in the morning and painting along the train tracks when you should be asleep. I just couldn't <laughs> understand it. So anyway, I started to go out with them to just see what it was like. And it was so much fun. So I guess this was... Um, the second part of how play relates to my life and growing up because um, to me it felt like the city was sort of my playground and um, it was a pure freedom of just going out and getting up to mischief and putting my art up around the street and um, this is also how I got my name Misery and um, so yeah with painting around the street you are expected to have a tag name which I also thought was really silly um, <laughs> and Elliot had been saving the name Misery because it had such excellent letters and I remember um, once him and I had a falling out and he told me that he was going to give the Misery name to my little sister <laughs> so she got to be Misery for a week and then we made up so I got back again which is really lucky so um Oh yes, yeah. so this is a picture of me and some really early graffiti. So these were like the characters I used to do around town that I guess everybody sort of became familiarised with and linked the Missouri name to these characters with these big sort of doe eyes. And um, also at the time I was one of the very few females in New Zealand doing graffiti, so I guess um, I got recognised for what I did quite quickly, which was cool, and um, soon after that I started working with illicit clothing to produce a t-shirt line, um, and I was actually living in Australia for a year studying photography 
while the t-shirt collaboration was all happening, so I remember coming back and um, for a group exhibition, and I had no idea how well the t-shirt line was going. Um, so I had this exhibition of all the work sold, just like that, and people were wearing my t-shirts all around town, so it was just like, wow, this is crazy. It was just kind of blowing up. So I decided to stay in Auckland and um, work closely with the clothing label and focus on that for a little while. So um, yeah, it was an exciting time because it felt like everything that I was really passionate about, everyone else was getting it as well and it was sort of blowing up as a brand in New Zealand and also overseas. Um, so these are just some flips of sort of old traditional looking Missouri work. So, um, yeah, the clothing label is doing really, really well. We are travelling to the United States quite a lot and um, showing our agents at trade fairs and it was just getting really big really fast and for me that was super, super exciting but also um, quite scary. <laughs> and I was finding it a little bit of a struggle in the sense that um, making art has always been about play and fun for me and all of a sudden it was um, something that people expected of me and it was a job and it was a lot of pressure in full time so it was um, me trying to find a balance between art being purely about play and art being a job for me um, and also keeping up with it I felt like I had to keep producing I kind of felt like a machine <laughs> for a while so after a while um, of this going pretty good I decided that I'd like to have a shop with it. So I opened a Missouri boutique that some of you might remember was just down the road here. And um, the shop was a huge success. And then after a couple of years, I just decided that I was just really too squeezed by it all and pretty burnt out and I wasn't really painting much anymore. I was just too focused on the shop and making clothing and um, I didn't want to be that anymore. So I decided to close the Missouri boutique and just focus on my art and being an artist. So, um, in a little while ago, I went through this sort of a little bit of an identity crisis, I guess. Um, I was just feeling kind of suffocated by Missouri and felt like the brand had sort of taken over who I was as a person and an artist. So, I thought the best way to deal with this was I playing dead. So I staged an exorcism to evict the spirit of Missouri out of me so that I could just be tidy for a while. Um, I sort of time because Missouri had been, you know, what I did for 10 years or something. So I didn't want to like get rid of her completely, I just wanted a break, which is why I had an exorcism. I thought I could always bring her back if I needed to. <laughs> um, so the next thing I did was I jumped on a plane and I joined up with um, my friend Pat Shepherd, who runs Spinning Top Charity in Wellington and they do a lot of work with um, Burmese refugee children in Maesot, which is sort of the border of Burma and Thailand. So I'd always wanted to go and do a project like this and I knew that Pat had been going up to Maesot and doing some pretty cool stuff with the kids there. So um, this was pretty much the best thing I could have done after 
my exorcism was go there and just be somewhere completely separate from my regular surroundings and sort of give back and play with the kids and make art and have a sweet ass time. So I did that, which is really healthy and a good thing to do. So um, this is an image of Sky Blue School, which is quite famous now. It's based on a um, rubbish dump. So right behind this school is just chaos and rubbish and the children there live amongst the rubbish. They make money from the rubbish. And lots of them are forced at maybe age nine or 10 to go and work in the dump and collect plastic to sell and make money for their family. So the school is there as a place for them to be educated and encouraged to stay in school and learn and um, also for them to eat and shower and play. So this is us playing and painting the school. <laughs> This is at Fumaki School, so I did work at two schools there, and um, this one was really amazing. So these children all live at the school, and we did a series of different workshops. This one was mask making, so we had a mask ball, so for a few days we made costumes and mask making. This is me having nap time with the kids and garden kids after a long day of painting. This was a really great project we did called Painting with Light. So we'd take um, an exposure with the flash and then it would be all dark and i just outline with a light pen of a character. Uh, so this guy over here, he's sort of, he's the school pastor guy and his name is Peacefully and he was, um, there's so many crazy characters in Mesot that I just fell in love with, and this guy is one of them. So he runs the school, he's this incredible human being, and um, looks after 150 children at his school. And he decided he wanted to take me and Pat hunting. So I was like, okay, we'll go hunting. So we, we thought it would just be like, I don't know, going fishing or something like that. But anyway, we're in the back of the truck, dressed in camo gear, all of a sudden driving two hours into the jungle, and peacefully gets out and straps his car battery to his back. And he said, we're going fishing. And this is his way of doing it. So he got in the water and he would zap the water with these rods to electrocute the fish, which there, <laughs> which there wasn't any fish, um, but lots of frogs. So they got lots of frogs to make green curry. <laughs> and um, we also went for a big hunt through the jungle, but we didn't get any other things, thank God. It's just awful. <laughs> um, okay, so after Little Lotus, I sort of fell in love with Southeast Asia and wanted to do more traveling there. And soon after, I got invited by Piaggio to come and do a job in Vietnam, which was really, really cool. I had so, so much fun. So um, one day, whilst on a lunch break there, I went for a walk and I came across this guy selling a bunch of little turnips on the side of the street and they were exactly the same shape as the characters I draw. So I was like, these are great, I'm going to paint on them. So I bought a couple of kilos. And while I should have been painting my motorbike, I started painting these turnips instead, <laughs> um, which sort of became the theme for my next body of work. So um, here's me painting some turnips. Yeah. Yeah, so this was the next inspiration for me and making my next solo exhibition, which was called Momoka. So I've also, with my artwork, I'm really into storytelling, and I think many of my art shows should probably just be children's books. They all have um, these kind of fairy tale-like fairy tale narratives. So this is me painting some work for my Momoka show. Turn up so the story is about this little girl whose name is Momoka and she has been um, cursed by an evil toad who turns her head into a log. And um, So now she's a little garden spirit and she looks after the vegetables and helps grow plants and stuff like that. Um, Momoka before she's cursed. Okay, so the next project that I'd like to talk about is Apri Silver Scrolls. Um, and this is a project I did with my now husband, Tom. And I wanted to talk about this one because I thought it was a really good one to speak about collaboration 
and how that relates to play. Um, so a lot of my work I spend doing by myself, which is great, but it can also be kind of boring and it's really lovely to have someone else to feed from and bounce ideas and know that you're doing an okay job and stuff like that. So April was really, really cool. I did this job with Tom in 2010 and 2011. And our brief was to turn the town hall into some sort of spectacular, dreamy masterpiece. So the first one we did um, was a huge swamp tree lantern forest. And um, it was cool. So we gave in a budget and a brief, but we just had to make as much stuff as we could and make it look really, really amazing. So it was a whole lot of figuring out what we were doing and a lot of crafting and making these environments. So this one is a picture from a bunch of stop motion we did. So my studio looked like some three-year-olds had gone and there was spray paint and confetti and glitter and glue and gone wild. We cut up all these little characters and spent weeks making all these stop motion animations. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that so well, but this is an image of the town hall of the swamp forest. And I'll play you a little video a little bit soon. So this is from the first year, and this is us painting many, many Chinese lanterns. Collaboration in play is really important to me, and I want to do much, much more of it. I think it's, um, it's really fun. I really, really enjoy it. So the next one I'm going to talk about is um, following my sort of vegetable and garden fascination. Um, a little while ago, I met a really great lady, Zancy White, who's a landscape and garden designer. And um, I spoke to her about us collaborating together. So we've been searching for a project that we can work together on. And um, Zancy won the Japanese Gardening Cup last year and was invited back again to do an environment for this year. So she was, um, her garden piece was um, about beauty and to create the most beautiful garden she possibly could. So um, it had to have water, had to have animals to eat, <laughs> had to have flowers and a blue sky. So she um, asked me if I could create a bunch of little creatures to go within her garden. So this was a really um, special and fun project. I had no idea how to make these little creatures. They had to stay outside, so be weatherproof. Um, <laughs> Some sheep. <laughs> There's my little sheep right up there, if you can see them. <laughs> They're tiny. I mean, the, the scene is meant to look huge, so I had to make them quite small. But it was difficult because I had no idea what it was going to look like. It was just sort of guessing. And she was already in Japan, and I was still making the characters. So it was a bit of a mission to get them done. This is my studio. <laughs> whilst making it all. As you can tell, I kind of live in there when I'm working on stuff. Um, so, yeah, my studio is completely covered in feathers and glue and... Oh, crazy. And um, my studio. I wanted to talk about my studio because this is my playroom and this is where I spend most of my time um, exploring ideas and figuring out new techniques and having fun. Um, I also share my studio with Tom, <laughs> but he doesn't really fit in there because I'm very messy and I love to sprawl out and make heaps of mess everywhere. Here's some shots in my studio. And then I was just going to play one more video for you.
that was a wall I did out of GI a few weeks ago with um, Askew, Gary Slipper and Benjamin Work. And um, I guess at the moment I've started to do a lot more graffiti, which is really, really cool. Um, earlier in the year I did a big world trip with my husband Tom. He's a tattooer, so um, we have a really cool thing happening now where we can both travel and he can tattoo and I can exhibit work and hang out with other artists and paint. And um, that's a really important thing to do, I think, living in New Zealand and being so far away from the rest of the world. Um, it's a really good thing to travel and keep connected with people. Even though there's internet and it's easy to find other people doing what you're doing, it's so important to travel and actually meet them and be making work together. So, um, yeah, that, that trip for me was really inspiring in terms of going back to what I, how I started doing what I do and painting walls. And um, I was lucky to meet Miss Van when I went to Barcelona, who I'd been friends with for a long time, but I haven't seen her for a very long time. So um, she's a huge inspiration for me and someone that I was really into her work from a young age. And when I was starting to do graffiti, she was one of the only other females that I knew of that was painting as well. So it's really great to see her work now and how she's progressed and is painting beautiful exhibitions all over the world which is what I want to be doing too. So um, future plans is painting a lot more walls, travelling and exhibiting and um, creating a passive income from what I do so that I can paint and not get burnt out by doing lots of commercial things. So um, very soon Askew and Libby, his girlfriend, and myself are going to be opening a um, print space downtown, which is going to be our place to do huge screen printing and create a passive income stream so we can focus on painting. Yeah, so that's my um, talk. And if anyone has any questions, I have a few prizes to give away for the best question. <laughs>